dogged behind temperate deciduous woods, glowing in the bright tropic of Kansas summer sun, set in a ray of medieval Danish architectural style houses, lies the Danish Red Cross managed Avenstrup Asylum Center, Falso. The center houses about 700 asylum sinkers ranging from ages 0 to 70 years, males and females, especially from war-torn countries of the Middle East, Horn of Africa, West Africa, the Caribbean Islands, Southeast Asia, and Latin America. Set in an isolated area with large forested woodlands, there's a natural environment which is cozy in summer but wicked in winter. The flowers blossom, the paths become very green and there's much to do in the little garden, children's center and even a somewhat animal house. Other facilities that are available at this center include an ambulance service, a cyber cafe and sports center were added to the camp and with this came a sense of relief and belonging and a taste of actual Europe. Almost every day new people come while others leave the camp, either because their cases were treated or because they died or decided to return to their original countries. There are also many children there, either they accompany their parents or were born there. There is an after-school club where kids are taught how to read, write, sing, dance and other stuff, but they are not given full education like those living free. Adults have the opportunity of being part of this after-school club using the library and the possibility of doing some part-time work outside, but it is risky and strictly forbidden. It is also possible to live outside the camp, but how do you survive since you are not allowed to work? At the camp, weekly rations of food are supplied by the Red Cross and some little money for upkeep and food rations. As time goes on, some people have additional rations, especially the sick expectant mothers, young children, or those with families, but it is not much as compared to those living free. There are three types of residences. Family residences, resi residences with rooms for two people, and residences with room for four people. Each room has a TV set, a heater to warm up the rooms during the winter, they have blankets and they sometimes they are allowed to buy an extra heater if they have the means. New people are given kitchen utensils such as pots, plates, spoons, and they share a common kitchen, toilet, and the washroom. In the other block, four people occupy each room. And these four people may be from different countries, from four different countries. They don't speak the same language, neither do they speak English. How they communicate still remains a mystery to me. Some people have been here for 10 years. Some have seen their files rejected a couple of times and are just waiting for repatriation to their home countries. The food is not very different from what obtains outside, since they have to buy it themselves. More so, cheerful givers also come with bread butter, eggs, sardines, and ketchup. There is a small bar and cafe where there is relaxation in the evenings and an open fire in the after-school club. There is a football stadium, including a basketball stadium and other sports facilities, including a drawing room. The adult school at Dinerland, just a couple of kilometers away from Avenstrop, offers diverse activities, while the camp's library can be used by those who want to study. There are other programs offered by a local Danish Ngo known as One World. In collaboration with Lindos Four School, also called the Traveling Four High School of South Zealand Province, Denmark. Set in this remote area of Denmark, some 53 kilometers away from Copenhagen, life in the camp is sometimes very, very unbearable. For instance, some people complain that the behavior of the staff, the checking in and checking out, you should al always have in keeping a key with you, the key to the bathroom, the key to the toilet, the key to the kitchen. It is often very horrible when you lose or forget your key or your, entry, your card. When this happens, the staff becomes very, very arrogant and very, very unwelcome. Where do you live? Where do you come from? 
Why did you forget your card? Why did you lose your key? Notwithstanding the millions of problems that they already have, another major problem in having stroke is the fact that you have to share a room, a kitchen, or a toilet with someone very different from you, and in certain circumstances, who does not even speak the same language with you. More added to this, there are no separate blocks for men and women. Men and women share the same toilets, kitchens, and baths. The worst and annoying part of Avestro is the transport system. Since it is set in a very, very remote area, maybe or probably it was, used to be a mental home, former military camp, no one knows. The movement in and out of here is a nightmare. It takes about two hours by public transport from Copenhagen, Gamma's capital, first by train and then bus, or about 30 minutes by bus on the towns of Vibe and Valso. There are no other means of transportation to and from the camp, and it is hard for people to go out and do anything, especially those who cannot afford to. For instance, the bus runs twice an hour during weekdays, sometimes up to midnight or just after 9 p.m. On Sundays, the bus is at the first bus is at 12 and the last is at 9 p.m. And in winter, traveling becomes worse and a nightmare. I can't say that life in this camp is the best or the worst, but the authorities, as I could see, are doing their best with the limited resources that they have. I also believe that with a better political will, much could be done to improve on the living conditions or facilitate and reduce the time it takes to process the files of these asylum seekers and also to facilitate their repatriation or for those whose files have been rejected.